Hey guys, Austin Schneider here, and today we're gonna give you seven mistakes when making an offer on a home. Alright guys, so you've worked really hard to you know get yourself to the point where you're ready to buy a home. You know, you've had a good job, you've saved up some money, you're ready to start building wealth through real estate. So what we want to do is give you seven mistakes that you should be avoiding if you actually want to follow through with making a purchase on a home. First things first is failing to get pre-approved for a mortgage before you start seeing houses. Getting a pre-approval with a lender is the absolute first essential step that you should be doing as a home buyer if you are going out to buy a house. Most agents won't even show you houses unless you've been pre-approved and really I wouldn't even start getting excited by searching for listings if you're not pre-approved because you won't even know what you'll be able to afford. Mistake number two is bidding your entire pre-approved amount when you are trying to buy a home. Guys, if it's not a very competitive situation or if you have the ability to you know, purchase a home below your pre-approved amount, why not give that a shot? You know, if you're pre-approved for $250,000 and you can make an offer at $240,000 and still have a chance, that's what you should do and not show all your cards right off the bat. Also, if you are making an offer, say for $240,000, but you're pre-approved for $250,000, make sure your pre-approval says that it's $240,000 because again, you don't wanna show all of your cards. That way, the sellers don't see that and they're like, hey, like these people can actually go up to $250,000. Why don't we counter with that? Mistake number three is not researching the sellers. Guys, a paramount thing that you and your agent need to be doing is figuring out the motivation behind the sale of the property. You know, are they motivated by something? Are they distressed? And that will either give you leverage or a clear understanding of how you could be structuring your offer to one, win the house if it's competitive, or two, save you money if you have the ability to you know, find some leverage points that may help you out in the long run. Stake number four is submitting a low ball offer. Guys, sellers are not going to be accepting offers that are unrealistically low. You know, they do their own research, they have agents that do the research on their behalf to come up with a price. And what you should be doing with your agent is figuring out, you know, is that the market price? Is there some leverage points that we could uh, uh, use to maybe get the price down? But a low ball offer doesn't show that you're serious about the home and could also offend the sellers. Especially in a hot market, low ball offers usually get passed up. So, you know, again, work really closely with your agent to, you know, come up with pricing that is more realistic and makes sense rather than thinking, oh, let's just submit an offer and see if they'll accept it. Mistake number five is including too many contingencies when you are making an offer. And no, this doesn't mean that you need to be waiving all your contingencies, like the financing contingency or the inspection contingency, but it does mean just be conscious of, you know, the amount of contingencies that you're putting on the offer, especially if there's uh, a chance that there could be multiple offers coming in. Uh, sellers don't really want to see you know, multiple contingencies that give s uh, buyers the easy out when it comes to uh, uh, not moving forward with the house. Mistake number six is using the agent that's selling the house to be your agent. Guys, this is generally a mistake if you are a buyer. The agent that's selling the house has the seller's best interest and is inclined to do what's right for their clients. When they're representing you, they're not going to have your best interest because it's in their interest to represent their client. And a lot of times if you are shopping, you'll come across, you know, seller agents who are saying, oh, we can, you know, it's not a big deal. We can help you out. We can give you a little bit of discount on the commission. But in reality, what they're trying to do is earn more commission because they'll get the uh, selling commission as well as the buying commission. What you need to do is, is really ensure that you have a good agent on your team that's going to have your best interest that may be able to save you money at the end of the day uh, despite what you're hearing. And the final mistake, mistake number seven, is letting your emotions control your decision. Guys, I see this time and time again. You know, people go into a house, they get really excited and they get really eager, especially first time home buyers, and you know, jump to conclusions and make decisions very quickly. Guys, what I like to say, you know, if you are, you know, starting to shop or you or you are getting really excited about a house is continue to build your gut. And what that means is, you know, see other houses in the neighborhood. Don't get your emotions set on one house before you get the keys. And how you can do this is, you know, again, build your gut by seeing multiple houses. Get some outside opinions, whether that's family, friends, have them see your house. Don't get too impatient. And you want to make sure that you're not overlooking any defects that uh, you know could be drawing near, you know, whether that's getting an inspection or, you know, again, getting other people's opinions that maybe will 
may be able to help guide you in either solidify your, your decision or uh, give you some uh, actionable ideas. All right guys, there are many more mistakes that you can be making if you are going out to purchase a home. These were just a few of them. For more on this topic, visit us online at themortgagereports.com. Thanks so much for watching. Happy house hunting. We'll see you on the next video.